Welcome into K-State Online. I am Mason Voth, joined by Drew Galloway. We are here today to talk a little Big 12 football, uh, and more specifically, as we get closer and closer to Big 12 media days in Las Vegas this year, when uh, all the media will send in their ballots for the all Big 12 preseason team, we figured it'd be a good idea to basically just pawn off D.Y.'s idea for question of the week, where he talked a little bit uh, about his thoughts there and how many K-State would end up putting on that team. We'll try to verbalize it and give our opinions on it, as well as talk a little bit about some of the top guys in the Big 12. Now, in terms of locks for K-State to put on the all-Big 12 preseason team, who would those guys be in your mind, Drew? Oh, boy. You're going to – you're putting me on the soft locks. Yeah, to be honest, and this is – you can You can say, hey, I know that there are some guys that – that they could be. I wouldn't be surprised if they are. If they are, but <laughs> just guys that you know are 100% locks. Like we knew Cooper BB last year was a lock. So it, now I don't know that anybody's at Cooper BB's level like that. But I, you know, are there some guys that you think, yeah, I'm 98% sure he ends up on the list? Boy, well, to, to be honest, and this is kind of what Derek talked about in uh, his article about, I, I don't know if there is one. Like the, there's a lot of talent on this roster, but it, a lot of it is young and unproven. And with 16 teams, it's hard to think of one player right now that I'm like, yep, I'm confident, like writing their name in, r- r- like right off the cuff. Like I know that we'll get into it on uh, guys that we think probably should be on it, but I don't know if there's one player that I would be like super upset if they didn't make a list as we're talking right now. Yeah, I, I I don't know like who I would throw out there. I don't think anybody offensively, I would say, is a lock just because, uh, I mean, two of the main positions, you look at quarterback and running back, there are some really, really good ones around the rest of the league that I, I wouldn't be surprised if either Avery Johnson or DJ Giddens is on there, but I also like it's far from a lock just because of how good the others are in the league defensively is where you start to, you know, kind of look around and say, okay, could there be anybody that stood out enough that, that makes their mark there uh, and stands out to people? I don't, I I don't know that there is like, I did, I did give you a question that I knew that the answer would be (laughs) hard to come up with. Uh, So I, and I, and then I wanted to follow it up that way. Everybody was mad at you for saying there were nobody, there were no locks, but uh, I I side with you. There are guys that like, I will, and like we'll talk and make a, an argument for and like I'd be a little disappointed if they didn't make it. But I don't think that there's anybody that's proven enough right now to be like they need to be on this team or we burn down the Big 12 office like Cooper Beebe was. Yeah, I mean, I might I might do that anyway. Just, you know, have a little fun, <laughs> burn it all down, see how it goes. Uh, but yeah, no, it's I, I think it's yeah, it's it's tough to kind of pinpoint right now uh, on kind of who would would fit that bill and what it ends up looking like. But is, is Marky Siegel maybe the best bet defensively? Uh, would he be the closest to being kind of a lock on that list in your eyes? He was the one that I really kind of thought about the most in terms of guys that aren't necess- that should make it, but probably not a lock. I would be a little disappointed if he didn't make it just because I think that if you look at his whole season, and not just like what we remember of dropping a lot of interceptions, <laughs> that he was a really, really good safety last season mm-hmm. and was probably one of the better ones in the Big 12. And he will probably be on my ballot as well. But I, I don't know if you can say it like with 100% certainty that he will make it. Yeah, I think that's just a tough one. And, you know, if the if the people out there saw all the drops last year, I could also see that <laughs> getting into their minds. I'm like, well, this guy... 21 he he's in he's in the way of a lot of balls i don't know that he comes down with a lot of them uh as everybody knows marquis Siegel's my guy so that's not a, a shot at him all right so then let's let's get into the murky waters and who and we'll stay d- defense right now because i think there are arguments to be made offensively and i think offense is far more entertaining than talking defense for people so defensively for k-state who could be a candidate for the preseason list not Hey, end of the year, I think this guy's going to have a really good year, so he's going to be on there. So defensively, who could be on that list that you think, yeah, they slide in there, they have the case to be all Big 12 preseason? Defensively, I think that there's really 
two, maybe a third name. Like one, we already hit on Marquis Siegel. He probably should make it, but I, again, like I'm not going to burn it down if he doesn't. Uh, but Desmond Purnell has a case just with how well he really came on at the end of last season and had probably his best game uh, in the Pop-Tarts Bowl against NC State and how he can really build off of that. Uh, I would listen to an argument for either one of the corners or Austin Moore, but I would lean probably that they would not make it. Austin Moore just has a lot of career accolades at this point, and I think that with the recognition that he could get or the name recognition could kind of play a factor with him. Uh, I would listen to an argument for Jacob Parrish because he finished, I believe, number one or number two in the Big 12 in interceptions and pass deflections, uh, if you combine them. But I think that those are probably the guys, uh, because you look at uh, defensive end, Brendan Mott, older, but not a lot of, like, stat production last season. I think that he... I think that he had the best season of all the K-State defensive ends, uh, but he probably didn't ha doesn't have the stat recognition and all the stats to make first team all Big 12 since there's only one team. Uh, Travis Bates, unproven at the FBS level. Chidi Obi Eisor only played in two or three games last season. And then Jordan Allen redshirted, so like I just can't really talk myself into those guys. Uso Sayamalo probably doesn't have the stat production and just wasn't healthy a lot last season. Um, then Alec Marenko, unproven at the Power 5 level. Jordan Riley, unproven at the Power 5 level. VJ Payne, I would kind of entertain a little bit, but I'm just not sure if I could write him down when I'm not sure about Marquis Siegel. And then uh, Keenan Garber. I I like Keenan Garber. I just don't know if I like him enough to put him on my first team ballot in the preseason. Yeah, and that's just one of those where they're only going to put out one list for the the preseason. It'll have a little bit more than usual, but it's it, it's tough to make this list. And for so many of these K State guys, they're just they they're not locks. Like there are fifteen other teams in the league yeah. this year. It's going to be tough. Uh, I mean, this list is going to be tougher than it's ever been for people to compile. This is no longer hey, there's only ten teams, so we know that uh, it's just an automatic. Do you play fullback at K State? You're on the list. You know, if this was two years ago, even I would say that Austin Moore, Marquise Siegel, and Desmond Pernell are both pro are all probably locks. Yeah. Now I'm not sure if any of them are going to make it. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's a good point. That it's it's wild, and we talked about this yesterday when we were talking about Lincoln Cure situation as the the top recruit in the state, and mm -hmm. it's just like you know any other year he would have been the guy. Uh, but unfortunately, like this is just a really packed year when it comes to that stuff. So fascinating to talk about defense will be tough. Uh, I think that's where K-State's upside at the end of the year might be in terms of all Big 12 teams. But for the preseason, probably just not enough guys that have the buzz. So offensively speaking, I think we know that Avery Johnson, DJ Giddens could be in the conversation. So and we'll get into the intricacies of quarterback running back in a little bit. But real quick. Anywhere else on offense you think even has a shot? Does a guy like Easton Kilty, who transfers in, was really highly sought after in the portal, offensive line, you know, you're going to get five of those spots. So is there a chance that he gets thrown into that mix or anybody else uh, that returns to the K-State offensive line? I, I could actually see an argument made for Hadley Panzer as somebody that has started two seasons and then played a lot as a true freshman at K-State. Uh, just because the offensive line, it's – it's so subjective when it comes to who you want at, in those five spots that I, I could definitely see an argument made for him as a returning starter for one of the best offensive lines of the Big 12 a season ago with one of the best offensive line coaches in the Big 12 and one of the best in the country in Connor Riley. So I, I could see an argument made for him. Receiver, I think that everybody's kind of unproven. At, at this level, Like I, I like where Jace Brown ended the season. I like Keegan Johnson's potential. And I like uh, Dante Cephas's potential, but probably not enough to make them my first team all Big 12 preseason. Same with Garrett Oakley. Uh, I guess this isn't really an offensive position because it, technically I think this falls on defense. But Philip Brooks got this bump his entire career. Dylan Edwards, punt returner. That's it. That's a that's a good thought to throw out there. I I think that's probably a good one to 
to put and yeah and honestly what dylan edwards is going to get is the bump of not only the fact that people know hey he's just really he's fast he's this great athlete uh but also he's going to get the k-state special teams bump that is going to exist for a long time i always talk about this but pe people don't understand all of the positions of football easily enough or the different units to where if you're good at one thing for you know in any extended period it's going to take people 10 years if you've gone bad to realize oh they're not very good anymore like i think people are just now coming around to the idea that the cowboys offensive line has not been like what it was in 2014 anymore like they're just now realizing that they're like oh like all these guys are totally different they're they haven't been as, as productive uh k-state special teams is that way and now the hope would be that a guy like dylan edwards is going to reinvigorate it for k-state and make that a more lethal part of their game again. Um, but that's that's a good one to throw out there because that's one that uh, should probably be mentioned and thought of. That, that's really the only position where, now, now that I'm really kind of digging into it and thinking about it, I, I don't want to say that Dylan Edwards as a punt returner or kick returner is like lock territory, but especially like around the league, you have the reputation of case eight special teams. Everybody kind of knows what Dylan Edwards brings to the table. I think I would be a little surprised if another returner got one of the returning or one of their other returning spots. Yeah. So that's one to, to kind of keep in mind. All right, let's talk DJ Giddens and running back, because I think there are a lot of other conferences where DJ Giddens would have a really good chance, but in the big 12, you have a lot of guys at that spot that are going to be splitting votes from people. And it's going to be really tough to find it because if you look around, we know that DJ Giddens is really good. We know that, you know, Devin Neal in the same state is really good. Ollie Gordon was one of the best players in college football last season, and it's probably the sole reason why Oklahoma State was what they were. Taj Brooks is back at Texas Tech. He is one of the best running backs in the country. RJ Harvey at UCF has to be in that conversation. Uh, and I'm, you know, I'm sure that there are, are others that need to be thrown out there, but those are some of the top guys. Can you make the case for DJ Giddens, or is it just too tough with how talented the running backs in this league are? I, I think there's a case to be made for DJ Giddens, and it comes from him being one of the top players in the Big 12 last year in yards per carry, one of the top in case of history in yards per carry and yards per touch. And, and he has the notoriety of having that big game against UCF that kind of was his coming out party to the rest of the country of how good he really is. But it, it is tough, though, because you have, you have the Doak Award winner from last year, and he's probably, I would say, there's probably only a handful of guys that I can really think of right now that I think would be like a unanimous selection, and that might even be more than I'm, <laughs> than uh, is what other people think. But I think that Ollie Gordon will for sure be a unanimous selection, or that person probably shouldn't have a vote. Uh, RJ Harvey was really, really good last year. And I think that UCF is going to be pretty good. And I think just think that there's probably a little bit more explosion with RJ Harvey, which is a little bit more exciting for people. Uh, Devin Neal, it's kind of in the same boat as DJ Giddens, where if there, if there was a second team, I'm pretty confident that it would probably be DJ Giddens, Devin Neal. But instead, both of those guys are probably on the outside looking in. And because even like a guy like Tosh Brooks, who is one of the most underrated players in the Big 12, you're probably he's probably on the outside looking in and might not even he probably wouldn't be even be considered for a lock to be second team if yeah. if I was to kind of take a stab of where he is. If we're talking about uh bumps and dips, I think RJ Harvey does get the UCF dip though. I don't know. I think, I yeah. think it's tough there. Like I think if you throw out there Oh, you know, Kansas State, they're they're really good at football. Oh, Texas Tech, we know a lot about Texas Tech. Oh, Kansas, they're they sucked and now all of a sudden they're good. Like uh, like there's all that UCF, it's just kind of like, oh, UCF's there, you know. This is not UCF with Scott Frost or uh Josh Heupel running the show anymore, so you know, who, who cares? Uh so I think I think there's the 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 chance that there's the RJ Harvey dip. And we also have to consider that uh of the people filling this out, we've got a bunch of yahoos from the Pac-12 coming in to uh to screw up this party so we're gonna have to see if they know big 12 ball or not they'll um, vote for scataboo for you <laughs> i was gonna say yeah they're gonna throw a lot of scataboo love in there uh, 
the most fascinating thing to me about the all big 12 list will be who the second running back is. Yeah, it's there are a lot of good options. And, you know, maybe with 16 this year, maybe they do decide, hey, we're, we'll put out two teams uh, this season. That would be nice. It, it would make sense. I mean, you've basically you've almost doubled what you've had <laughs> the last handful of years. When, uh, when when the honor roll mention list, it literally just takes one vote. Why would you not just make a second team? Yeah, exactly. And then don't then don't, don't put the honorable mention. Then screw the honorable mentions for a person that got one vote. That's just that's just one vote. That's nothing. There's nothing honorable about that mention. You got one vote. Uh, all right, let's get to the big show real quick to to round it out. Quarterback wise, we've talked quarterback the last couple of weeks here on the uh, KSO show. What do you think of? who you would put there and who will be there. But well, that's a that's a loaded question. This is probably the second most interesting thing about where the Big 12 list is going to end up going. I I think what's going to end up happening is it's going to be Shadur Sanders. What I think I'm going to put there is going to be Noah Fafita. I, I I just think that Fafita probably I don't think it's like a, a crazy thing to say that he's more proven than Avery Johnson at this point. So I think that he's probably a safe bet. And I just think that Shadur Sanders just has the name brand and name value that the guys that don't know ball that are coming in are just going to put Shadur mm-hmm. Sanders. Yeah, that's that's probably what will happen. And certainly probably the most talented quarterback as we stand right now in the Big 12. Obviously, I mean, he's going to be a first round pick in all likelihood. But also, this this is not just about like, hey, who's the most talented guy? It's about who is going to be the best college football player at that position in this league. And you don't want to project too much with this because you don't want to be the guy that's like, well, I could, you know, I could see an avenue where, you know, so and so really busts out this year and they're going to have a big year. I think it's going to happen. But you do need to use an element of realistic predicting here. And I, I, I have no problem saying right now that I will put Avery Johnson down as my quarterback on the all big 12 list because I just think that he is primed to be the best and most impactful quarterback in this league next season. I think there are a lot of good options out there. You mentioned Sanders and Fafita. Uh, we know Jalen Daniels is going to be brought up at KU. We know that Cam Rising is going to be brought up at Utah. Those two guys are going to have to hop out the hospital bed before I, you know, I throw them on this list. But those are going to be options. KJ Jefferson's name will be floated. There is no doubt in my mind that KJ Jefferson is one of those guys that gets that honorable mention that you're talking about, Drew. No, KJ is Je- going to get that one vote honorable mention. KJ Jefferson's probably going to be newcomer of the year in the Big Twelve, if I had to guess right now. Yeah. Uh, so I, I, I just think it's going to be Avery Johnson because this is not like, oh, it's some bold prediction because we saw his talent last year when he was on the field in a big way. And now he's going to get to be the full-time guy. And I, I think it's pretty easy to see with his skill set that he can have the biggest impact in this league at that position. So I think I think Avery Johnson has a real case. I don't think he ends up getting it. I do think you're probably right. I think it ends up being Shadur Sanders. Because um, even Fafita, I think people are probably just going to be like, you know, he's a freshman last year, young, whatever. So they're going to roll with Sanders. Um, but if they were smart, they wouldn't because – that the whole Sanders family is a bunch of clowns and they run a clown show in Boulder. So I, I would not, I, here's your choice, Drew. Uh, would you rather have, I don't know, Cam Newton at quarterback or a clown? Uh, Cam Newton. Okay. There you go. So, uh, follow up question. Would you rather have Avery Johnson or a clown? <laughs> Avery Johnson. Do you know that clown's name? Is it should Sanders? Wow. Okay. You're great at this game. Drew <laughs> wins, uh, the clown game for, today on KSO shout out to Drew Galloway for uh you know wasting some time out of his day to hop on here with me and piss off the Colorado fans but all hey, 2000 I, I, of them I, I will say that you talk to me in a couple weeks and I'll probably feel better about putting Avery Johnson in because as we get closer to football and everything getting going that's really when like the juices flow out and like that's when you make the prediction of like Avery Johnson first team all big 12 I I'm going to think really long and hard about who I put as offensive player of the year in the big 12, because even though I said Noah Fafita, like I could really talk myself into putting Avery as 
Big 12 preseason offensive player of the year. I think I think Big 12 preseason player of the year on offense has to be Ollie Gordon. I think that's the no. I think that's the lock. Wrong. Okay. All right. Well, Peter. <laughs> I guess I don't know. I I would probably just pick the guy that was like a Heisman Trophy candidate last year. The actually a Heisman Trophy candidate, not just a guy that you know his odds popped up one time on FanDuel or something. Um, well. Well, you're just a hater. Which right. goes for a lot of the quarterbacks in the Big 12 the last two years, where it's like if you at any point in the first six weeks of the season, you had like one and a half big games. It's like, oh, did you see their odds? It's up there. You know, Adrian Martinez, the before the TCU game, got a feature on college game day about his Heisman uh, chances and everything. Um, they, here's a hypothetical for you, and this is probably way further down in the summer when we got nothing else going on to talk about. Uh, but I just want to plant the seeds. If I if I let you go back in time right now, and oh and I said Adrian Martinez stays healthy in that TCU game, do you take what happened the rest of the season with Will Howard and how things played out with Adrian, or do you let it ride out knowing how Adrian Martinez was playing and you get a healthy Adrian, so you're not getting the hampered Adrian that walked into the TCU game coming off of the Iowa State game and, and everything moving forward, like you get a healthy Adrian versus the the healthy Will. Are you taking what you got or are you saying, I want to I want to ride this thing out with Adrian Martinez? I think you got to take what you got because it could play out really well for K-State and still end up not hoisting the trophy and flags fly forever. It's the same mm-hmm. thing with like a, when Royals fans talk about like the Johnny Cueto and the Ben Zobris trades, like would you do it again? Hell oh yeah, well, yeah, because those guys sucked that they traded away. <laughs> like, absolutely, because the uh, the the flag flies forever and the rings last forever. So like, I, I I don't think that I would go back and take it a healthy Adrian as much as healthy Adrian was extremely yeah, well, funny at Oklahoma. I think you're discrediting the UFL MVP for 2024, <laughs> but that's just me. Uh, yeah, you know, it's funny you bring up that Royals trade. They had the the celebration of the 10-year anniversary of American League champs in 2014 this past weekend, and Brandon Finnegan was there. Like, Brandon Finnegan is not playing real professional baseball right now. He, I think he might be playing for the Monarchs. Uh, Last time the, I saw him, he was in the Independent League. Yeah, the but the American Association, uh, that's, you know, that's glorified <laughs> professional baseball. Um, so, like, I... I don't know. That's it is crazy how that all worked out. I I think I would have to be with you from a realistic standpoint, but the thought has crossed my mind multiple times that like and maybe it's just because like I so badly wanted that success for Adrian just because of how awful those Nebraska fans were regarding the whole situation uh and just I mean obviously the talent that was there with the running and and once he you know cut it loose as was being thrown around a lot in that season, uh, the passing was there. So I think it would have been fascinating. I I would like an alternate reality where I can at least see the outcome there. I don't know that I want to give up what K State achieved, but just the thought. Are, that are you guaranteed a trophy in both scenarios? Because that's no, a, I think no, you're right. not guaranteed anything in the Adrian scenario. Oh well, see, then you have to. The only thing I'm guaranteeing you is that he does not get hurt. He's at, he's at 100 percent health. He is at his fullest powers in that the, moment. Then I think that you have to roll with Will. I think it would be a more intriguing uh, question if you were guaranteed a trophy with both. Uh, take out accolades with it. Would you have had more fun with Adrian Martinez at quarterback than Will Howard there? Like in terms of style of play, I'm not saying like is Will Howard not fun. I think think and Will part, Howard had his fair share of fun moments and it was it, fun enough. If we get Oklahoma game, Adrian, I think and Adrian, Texas Tech and Texas Tech, Adrian, I think you have to go Adrian. But Will was so good at that back end of of 2022 yeah. that I think that both were so fun like yeah, having think- the, the the ability to just zing it deep in that 2022 season was something that was really missing from last year yeah with well, Will. I mean, Will Howard he he made throws that I'm not sure any other K-State quarterback has ever made uh during that back stretch of the year where it's just like I'm gonna zip it in there and I'm not worried about it whatsoever uh which was probably a good thing for him until it wasn't last year. Maybe got a little too confident. I think the Will Howard story is going to be funny. and We're going on longer than what we need to here, so we'll finish it up. But it's funny because those first two years, it was it was so conservative and like it was like a jittery careless with the ball. We're like, I'm sure he wanted to take care of it, but like he just couldn't. He didn't have that ability. 
And then it shifts to where like he's right in the perfect spot at the end of 2022 when he has to take over. And then it shifts to the other side of the pendulum where it's like, put on the gas, let's go, baby. I can, I can let this thing fly. And that's the, he got back to that careless level for a totally different reason. Uh, so just kind of a, a fascinating thing to think about. Well, maybe we need to do like some what ifs uh, during the summer when, you know, official visits are done and we're sitting here in July, nothing's happening and we'll go off of that. So but we'll get out of here. We'll, Will will always have the last touchdown at Old Memorial Stadium, though. That's true. That is very true. So, shout out there uh, to Will Howard uh, for that that run. The most predictable thing ever. I mean, how KU didn't know that he was just going to keep that ball on that drive. I I question if they actually watch tape in Lawrence. So, maybe they want to build a film room uh, with this new renovation that's going on that would be my suggestion so uh, we pissed off enough of the big 12 we'll get out of here drew can enjoy his weekend so for drew galloway i'm mason Voth. thanks for watching the kso show more about the cats next week on on three and right here on the kso youtube